Hey everyone, today we're talking about everything that you need to know about Columbia, Maryland, and let's get started right now. Welcome back to the channel everyone where we talk about all things living here in Maryland. So if you're looking uh, to find out information about what it's like to live, eat, sleep, play here in the state of Maryland, make sure to hit subscribe, hit the like button to be notified of our new weekly videos where we talk about all things Maryland. And if you are looking to move to the area, if you have any questions, uh, we love answering your questions and helping out in any way possible. So feel free to reach out to us anytime if you're looking to buy, sell, um, and live here in the area. We would love to help in any way that we can. So when I think of Columbia, Maryland, I really do think of the hub of Howard County. So it's pretty big, it's 32 square miles, um, and you've also got 105,000 people um, in Columbia. Howard County has roughly 330,000 people. So you've really got pretty much a third of the entire county's population uh, right in Columbia. So you've got a lot to do, lots of housing, um, and it really is a good size. With the mall as well, it always feels like almost there's more people just because there's so much activity um, around that area and just kind of people coming in from all over um, Howard County and even surrounding counties for all that Columbia has to offer. So if you're looking for a fun night out, um, the mall at Columbia definitely has you covered. Uh, they've got a ton of things to do, a ton of different restaurants to eat at. So just to name a few, uh, Seasons 52, uh, they've got a Cheesecake Factory, a Maggiano's, Uncle Julio's kind of uh, towards the, the edge of the mall, which is really good. Um, probably some of the best margaritas in the area uh, that we've had. Uh, main event is right next door to Uncle Julio's, and that's kind of like a, a mini Dave & Buster's. Lots of games, lots of fun stuff to do there. And then kind of on the outskirts of the mall, you're gonna see Lake Kittimacwandi. Um, you're gonna have a lot more other shopping and kind of eateries and things to do out there. So a lot of cool things to check out. They've got a Whole Foods. Um, they've got a lot more building as far as housing. Um, and stuff coming up. So just a lot of activity going on, a lot of growth that you're gonna see around the mall area as well. And then on the outskirts of the mall, you're also gonna find Meriwether Post Pavilion. This is one of my favorite places, especially come summertime. And it's crazy, we get big names that come right into um, Columbia. So at Meriwether, just in 2021, we've got Luke Bryan, Zach Brown Band, Dave Matthews Band, Pitbull, um, all coming and I know there's some other big names coming in 2022 as well. So definitely a fun area to check out. I would definitely hop on their website, check out their calendar. Um, they also do really cool things during the summer like wine in the woods, uh, beer festivals and stuff all throughout the year. Um, so a lot of fun stuff that they do there to kind of get together with people and, and have fun on the weekends. So definitely something to check out. Another awesome thing about Columbia is its central location. So I know for me, I'm in Columbia a lot, and as I'm talking to clients and, and people, um, this is just a huge factor for them as well, is its central location. So if you pull up Columbia on a map and you kind of zoom out, you're gonna see that um, just north, uh, you got Baltimore. So about 20, 25 minutes, depending on traffic, um, you can whip right into Baltimore, up 95. And then uh, south, you've got DC, probably about 45 to 50 minutes, depending on traffic. So um, I know people with all the government work and, and everything like that, it's, it's just a huge uh, bonus to be that close um, to the dual metro area. So huge driver into Columbia as well. It's also just really easy to get around in Columbia and it's got a lot of good um, central highways that allow you great accessibility to get around um, to other places as well. So you've got 100, um, you've got 32, 175, all running east-west um, if you need to kind of get different places. And then you've got 29, 95, Route 1, all kind of running north-south through the heart of Columbia as well. So if you need to get anywhere commuting, it's really ideal with all the, the highways and uh, accessibility for driving and, and commuting as well. So with Columbia being a part of Howard County, that's also a huge driving factor for a lot of people moving to the area. Um, Howard County is definitely has the number one schools uh, here in Maryland. So if that's something you're looking for, I would definitely look more into Howard County. Uh, if you have um, a child with special needs as well, Howard County hands down has the best uh, program in the states. So that's something I would definitely look more into. Columbia does have some good schools. I would also just, you know, encourage you to do more research um, into that because you are going to see, especially throughout Columbia, Central Columbia, you're going to see, you know, four or five, a lot of four or fives and sixes as far as like ratings and stuff like that. So just kind of look into that and see if that meets 
uh, kind of the standard of what you're looking for and do some some more digging there as well. Um, you are going to see some good schools as well, but you're going to see um, a lot of schools in that range as well. So just make sure that that fits exactly what you're looking for. So with Columbia being a planned city, um, you are gonna see all different types of housing. So it really is designed to accommodate um, so many different people as far as making sure that it's affordable for people. So you're gonna see anywhere from $150,000 condos all the way up to you know, eight, nine hundred thousand dollar homes um, and everything in between. So more than likely, whatever you're looking for, Columbia's got it. And very often the way that they designed everything, it's kind of a way that it's not all separated. Right, so you don't just have a part of Columbia that's all single families, part of Columbia that's all townhomes. It's kind of all intermingled. So you'll see um, some, you know, nice townhome communities, and then right around the corner, you're going to see single families, um, and then some condos. So you're going to kind of see it all, and it's all going to be um, intermingled as well. So that's that's something that Columbia is very unique um, in the fact of kind of when you compare it to the rest of Maryland, that it's it's kind of got everything very close by. All right, next thing to know about Columbia is it's made up of 10 villages that make up what's called Columbia Association. So Columbia Association works in a couple different ways that I'll explain here in a minute. Um, but the 10 villages make up the one um, Columbia Association, CPRA or CA that you'll see. Um, so they kind of all kind of mean the same thing. Um, but the 10 villages kind of act independently and they're kind of working more at a local level uh, within Columbia to just kind of build community. Um, they do a good job about offering classes, programs, um, stuff year around. So you're gonna see a lot of um, you know, different things offered uh, within each community, which is really cool. So if you've got kids, this is a great place to be. Um, you're gonna see a lot of different opportunities for them to get out and meet new people and have uh, a good time year around. You're also gonna to see tons of walking trails um, right within you know, your community. So um, right within neighborhoods too. So you'll just kind of see some, you know, driving down a random street and then you'll just see like a trail start and you're gonna see those all throughout Columbia. Um, so if you like getting outdoors, if you like walking your dogs and uh, just kind of being outside in general, Columbia's gonna have a lot of that kind of stuff um, to offer you. So definitely look more into that as well. And Columbia Association uh, really maintains all this stuff. So they're um, kind of updating all the community grounds, all the, the trails, all the community pools and all that kind of stuff. So everything that CA has to offer, um, they have to make money to, to keep up with all that stuff. So Columbia Association is gonna act in two ways. It's really a city tax for about 80 to 85% of Columbia. And it also acts as an HOA essentially. So um, it's a city tax in the sense that they charge based on um, per thousand dollars of assessed value. So um, it's really something that you really can't get around. There are a couple, uh, really a handful of communities within Columbia that don't have to pay that. So if you're looking for to avoid that kind of thing, Columbia does have some communities where you can get around that, but most of it, um, you're gonna see that this will apply. So on average, you're looking at like for a townhome, you're gonna see that range from 600 to 900 bucks a year for that Columbia tax. Um, and then if you're owning a single family, you know, 500,000 and above, that's gonna range from 1,200 to 1,800 bucks a year. And this is gonna be in addition to your Howard County property taxes. Um, and then it acts as an HOA in the sense that they do have covenants and bylaws that you do have to abide by. So just like with any HOA, if you're gonna go put on a deck, or if you're gonna paint your house or do anything exterior related, you're gonna have to check in with CA, Columbia Association, and just get their, uh, basically their sign off and their blessing on that kind of stuff because they do have rules um, and there's certain things that they just don't let you do. So uh, if you're putting in a shed, for example, you, they've got certain criteria of size, color, and stuff like that. So it can get a little um, annoying to deal with. I know people have had some bad experiences, but in the in for the most part, they do. Um, they try to work with you. They try to be understanding, uh, but they will let you know if you're in violation. So it's it's something to be very aware of and be careful of. So if you're looking to buy a home, this is something that we are very aware of because anything that uh, any violation that sticks with the property once you close, you inherit. So we always are asking for what's called a Columbia Association letter of compliance. So this is basically going to have one of their. Um, you know, inspectors essentially come out and take a look at the property and tell us on a document if there's anything that's not in compliance so that we can get that resolved prior to closing on the home. Uh, but that's something you wanna be very aware of too because you don't wanna be, you know, inheriting a shed or something that's, um, 
that they're gonna make you tear down or give you a hard time about after you close on the home. So something to pay attention to, something to look into as well, and um, kind of how the Columbia Association acts. So on the topic of taxes, um, Maryland's 23 counties plus Baltimore City all pay what's called a county local income tax. This is based on where you live, not where you work. So if you work outside of Howard County, but you live in Howard County, uh, you are gonna pay Howard County's 3.2% local income tax. This is on top of the state income tax. So if you live in the state of Maryland, you're gonna have two different um, type of state income tax. You're gonna have the actual state income tax where if you make over $3,000 a year, you're gonna pay somewhere in the range of 4.75% to 5.75% depending on your income. And that kind of ranges depending on where you end up as far as um, adjusted gross income. And then you're gonna have the local income tax, which is based on where you live, not where you work. Um, Howard County is 3.2%, which is at the highest end. So you've got ranges, two and a quarter percent to 3.2%. You've got like Baltimore City, Howard County, Montgomery County, which are all at that 3.2%. And that's gonna be on top of uh, whatever your state income tax range is, but, but you know, between that 4.75 and 5.75%. So something to be aware of, Maryland is a, you know, pretty heavy um, state income tax state. So something to just be prepared for depending on where you're coming from and uh, look more into if that's something you're concerned about. All right, last couple of things here um, to be aware of. If you are going to fill up gas, I would recommend looking outside of Columbia for whatever reason, especially you know in the heart of Columbia, it seems like gas prices are usually around 20 to 30 cents higher than say like Ellicott City, Elk Ridge, Laurel, things like that. So just something to be aware of. It can get a little more costly within Columbia for whatever reason to fill up the tank. Um, so that's something to be aware of. And then red light cameras, Columbia's got a good amount of them. Um, and they don't mind <laughs> uh, charging you and feeing you for running red lights. So make sure um, you're keeping an eye out for that, especially on Snowden River Parkway, Broken Land Parkway, and in and around the mall. So something to be aware of and keep an eye out for those. They're big white cameras, you can't miss them. And uh, just uh, make sure you're either punching it or slamming your brakes uh, when you see those. All right, everyone, thanks so much for watching. Hope you learned something new about Columbia. If you ever have any questions, feel free to reach out or comment below, and we'll see you at the next video.